Hi, and welcome to Quantum Mechanics Revision 2. Right, today we're going to be looking at the life cycle of a kaon. So it's a kaon that's going to decay into something, which decays into something else, decays into something else. You should also know what all of these things are made of, what their composition are, and you might even have a stab at their half-life, so that, that is a little bit more difficult. So what I want you to do now is pause this video and fill in all this information from memory. Come on, this is a revision class. Use your brains. Okay, so pause the video, have a go. Okay, so whenever we're approaching something like this, let's think about what's a sort of general strategy. And we know that things always decay into stuff smaller than that, don't they? We always lose rest energy. So big things decaying into small things decaying into small things. And if you think about our conservation of mass energy equivalents, it has to be that way. Because our mass can break into other masses and other bits of energy. But there's no real way to put more energy into there, so we can't decay up. So whatever our kaon's decaying into is probably going to be small. So we start with the kaon, discovered in 1947. Think for a moment, why was the kaon discovered before particularly these two particles? Because it's bigger. Simple as that. Bigger things are easy to find. So the kaon contains an up and an anti-strange particle. So remember that kaons are strange, so they've got enough anti-strange. That's K plus, K minus, obviously, other way around. And they have a half-life of about 10 to the minus 8 seconds. Because they've got such a short half-life, they're very, very difficult to observe. Think for a moment, what would be a good way of observing a kaon if it's only going to hang around for 10 to the minus 8 seconds? Have a little think. The answer is, we can accelerate them up to relativistic speeds, at which point they'll time dilate. Because if they're going fast enough, their clock will go slow. And therefore, while it'll be 10 to the minus 8 seconds in the frame of the kaon, if you're sitting in the lab watching it whiz past, you could accelerate it so it's around for minutes. And that's how we can observe these incredibly short-lived particles, by accelerating up to relativistic speeds, and then the time will dilate. Great. So, what does the kaon decay into? It decays into a pion. Pion, just like a kaon, is a meson. All mesons made of a quark-antiquark pair. In the case of a pion, it's an up and an anti-down, and it's going to stay for around the same amount of time. 10 to the minus 8 seconds. Pions are very similar to kaons in that they're both mesons, much, much smaller, uh, less than a third of the rest energy, I believe. And yeah, they're not going to hang around for much long either. Pions are going to decay into muons. Muons are leptons, so be careful. They're not made of quarks because they're leptons. They are instead fundamental. What does fundamental mean? It means that we don't know what it's made of yet. Uh, so we just assume that it can't be broken up. So muon, fundamental, for now. How long do they stay around for? They stay around for ages. They stay around for 2.2 microseconds. So far, far longer than the kaon or pion before them. So muon's relatively stable. The reason for this is they can only decay through the weak interaction. And as we know, they, particles that can only decay through the weak interaction tend to hang around for a little bit longer. So muon is fundamental. Finally, what does the muon decay into? Hope you remember this. The electron, which is also fundamental. So not really made of anything. Uh, electron got a slightly higher half-life, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 28 years. So just a little bit longer than the three before it, but not so much that you'd really notice. So there you go. That's how it decays. Remember, we go from the biggest thing down to the smallest things. These two are mesons, so quark and quark pair. These two are leptons. Remember, they both have their own lepton number that needs to be tracked and conserved throughout it. And uh, the muon must be bigger than the electron because we are not decaying down. There you go. Now this week, as well as answering the question underneath, I also want you to do material science too, because although it's a little bit advanced, there's some really good stuff on there that will get your brains working. Okay? Have a good weekend. I'll see you next week.